welcome to a short update from us uh, around the release of our roadmap. So Simon and I just want to take a few moments to talk through with you around what's happening on the roadmap, uh, what we've got happening coming up, uh, and you know the kind of discussion we want to have around why we're building the way we're building. So uh, hey, Simon, how are you doing? Hey, dude. Yeah, not too bad. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. That's Run good. up to Christmas. Yeah, uh, pretty hectic. Pretty hectic. <laughs> So um, a few of our community members have been asking around, you know, when's the roadmap coming out? When is it being updated? So um, thank you for your patience in waiting for this. We've spent a bit of time really trying to make sure we're putting something down that makes sense and is meaningful. Uh, and so thank you for waiting for us. But um, Sim, uh, the roadmap, you, you, I'd like to hear a bit about from your point and everything you're building right now. You mentioned that a lot of this is coming through experimentation of, and, and how we're building. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, so um, I guess yeah, we've 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 been sitting on the roadmap for a little while now. So we've been um, um, or the updated version of the roadmap for a while, um, and a, a large part of that has been because we have been working actively with a few projects and building through uh, basically needs based building, I guess. Um, uh, in terms of the protocol and the modeling tool and the, the capabilities that we develop. But we're now in a bit of a phase that we we can release the roadmap. We have um, some clear vision on where, where how we need to build this um, and what we are focusing on as in terms of milestones coming up. So that's really been the, the, um, the work that we've been doing. Um, I guess the big, probably the big part for uh, the recent release has been the Iron World release. That's a really marquee thing for us. Um, I think that the part of that has been based on a lot of the observation from Hollow Chain um, development cycle. I guess uh, one of the things with probably I think one of the most valuable assets to the Hollow Chain team has been the the scaffolding tool that um, Guillem and some of the team wrote there just really makes it accessible to it lowers, lowers the barrier to entry um, to getting involved in Holochain. So we've been sort of following that um, model as well with the Iron World modeling capability. So mm. that's a real focus of our roadmap um, and making that valuable and accessible to everyone in the Iron community. I think that's, it's a really good analogy, right? It's, it's about, it's we can spend so long trying to we can and we are spending so long trying to build the deep tech that runs this but if it's not if, if you can't access it if people can't use it then it still stays in the hands of only a few and this is this is the purpose of iron world isn't it it's to make it as you said accessible to everyone in every energy community project that people want to put forward um, and try and try and provide a gateway into it yeah that's exactly right and we've been seeing from from a lot of the projects that we've been involved on uh, like the Macedon and Manningham ones amongst others and the, and the Myanmar ones as well, that it's such a complex field and it's the big problem in energy disruption and transactive energy solutions is they're, they're just so complicated. They, they um, bring together uh, code as well as complex electricity um, sort of concepts as well so we we just want to make that accessible to everyone so they can plan their project plan their roadmap deliver their outcomes and um and disrupt the world i guess it's a yeah <laughs> i mean yeah, that's exactly right but it is so like you're dealing with two massively complex things the, the world the world of web3 and how we transact through uh, in autonomous ways and then and then what's happening in energy and and energy itself is going through this massive disruption that is incredibly complex and has lots of different actors and so to actually reduce it down to something that is understandable that connects those two worlds the world of the world of energy and the energy transition to to what's happening in web3 and how we build it through the protocol is really tough but i mean that's why phil's been working and you've been working so hard on 3d models 2d models all the models that fit together and uh, like, as you said, and it's really good for people to know this as well, is that people, organizations are talking to us because they're really interested in that modeling feature that gives them that 
ability to then put this technology into practice in the future. And I think that's what's really making this exciting. It's about we're kind of on this inflection point where where we're starting to see the it's not mainstream adoption by any means at the moment, but it's this idea that we're we're a few steps away from that mainstream adoption that's coming over the next few years. Um, and that's what's really exciting, I think, using those tools. I, I think so. And the other just the other one that I'd add to there, A B is like it's it from a creativity perspective as well. Yeah. A lot of the complexity in energy um uh it's almost deliberately locks locks up mm. in a situation that that makes people think regulations are going to get in my way and there's um but the reality is that communities and small groups through the tool um and through just simple value transfer and energy transactions will be able to create value pools and and transact uh their, through their own ecosystems if we there are regulatory barriers to some some of the end state stuff that we need to do with energy but there's there's progress we can make right now um mm. and that's what we really want to sort of provide with the iron world tool is is a is a platform where people can create these projects mm. and create these value streams and um and use creativity to to deliver it so um mm. so that yeah just just removing the barriers i guess is the core it's it's a really good point. It, there's so much, you know, we're working with some really great regulatory uh, experts here. And they said, you know, show me one person who says they claim to understand the entire electricity market and, and I'll show you a liar because they can't. It's, just, it's so complicated. There's so much going on, but it's being created this way. You're right to keep it in the hands of a few and to make sure that status quo has been maintained. Status quo has given us climate change and given us the in energy inequity that we have right now. So this is, I mean, and this is why we're so... Um, so excited about the beta candidate release, the Holochain as well, and working with those guys is because it's a fundamentally new system, and that's what's that's what's kind of needed here. And it's it's ex really exciting to see people looking to these new systems of governance as a way to create a new future. Uh, it's really exciting. Yeah, and I think like one of the things that I, uh, it's worth a listen if you haven't um, anyone in our community to the Holochain beta um, AMA that was. Eric and Art and uh, Mary and David gave the other week. Um, but I know Eric spoke about uh, just some of the opportunity with uh, these emergent social spaces through mm. the Holochain system. And we're really setting up, and this is what Iron World is about again, almost social spaces for mm. energy projects. Um, so I was really happy to hear that in that AMA that comment from Eric because mm. um, very much aligns to our thinking of in the energy space and and where we're headed and and that's that's what we're trying to develop with these tools. So I think in the roadmap when we when we publish that um, probably straight after this call, um, that's one of the key features is just developing that um, toolbox for everyone to access there and developing the features in that. So that's our real focus into twenty three, I guess. Mm, really cool. Uh, this Eric's point about social physics, right? That's the yeah. how it's all going to fit together and how it's all going to work is 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 spot on. Um, so as to as a nice sort of segue from that one, so mutual credit is a big part of our system as well as is within within Hollow. Um, can we talk a bit about that? The, the ability to transfer between agents and and people in the community and, and where that's sort of sitting on the roadmap. Yeah. So so that's. Pretty much that peer-to-peer -peer value transfer, an agent-to-agent -agent value transfer, is already happening with the protocol, and that's already available in the in the um, uh, the open library that that we have on on our repo. Um, so this concept of supplier consumer and in a peer-to-peer -peer agent-centric network is is exactly what the protocol code does and um, enables right now. We're testing that with our projects. Um, the mutual credit um, implementation is kind of wrapped up a little bit with some of the, um, uh, you might say, the DAO componentry that we're building. So that ability to have the local accounting system, which is which we've called IO, IOEC, um, 
the community mutual credit accounting system, the ability to on, on and off ramp that through the ION ERC token is something where that, that um, provides that portability and utility outside of that local grid. So that's something we're, we're actively pursuing at the moment um, and doing some testing over the last, um, uh, last few weeks on, on that and, um, and starting to build into that. So that's another feature of the roadmap as well, aside from the, aside from the uh, modeling tool is just building that on off ramp um, uh, between the IOEC and the ION um, token and sort of reserve account DAO capability. Um, so that's another big one. And that's all, um, a lot of this is around sort of, as you said at the beginning, like working through experimentation, making sure it's working properly, taking it steady, building properly rather than whipping something together quickly. And and, I, and, and one thing that we were talking about um, before was this whole idea that you kind of got to understand the real world to then put the DAOs into place and make them work. Uh, and you've seen that through the other protocols as well. But the idea here that there is a real emerging system and, and emergence is the key word, right, in, in the, an agent-centric uh, system. But the emerging system of how this is going to interact between the local mutual credit and the ERC-20 uh, world, and that's going to emerge as new value pools. But what's really interesting here is we're, how do we bring that from the real-world examples we're seeing and now placing it into the DAO? It's, it's a step-by-step -step process, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the, so that's that build through experimentation for sure because it's we sort of have we're walking this rope this tightrope between sort of real physical project governance and um, the wants and needs of real projects and what can you build into code and what can you build into a, um, a distributor or autonomous organization from a from a code perspective, because um, there are things that still need to remain need, re, need to remain in the real world camp. So we're we're using some of the projects that we're working on, like the Manningham and Macedon one in particular, to to try and test what we can codify and what we what we can't, you know, um, and then also bring in from those projects what they're telling us that they would like built into code that maybe we haven't considered before. So that, that bakes into the roadmap as well. Um, so using these real project venues as a, as a bit of a test bed, um, but definitely that the agent based stuff is this agent centric architecture is game changing in these venues. Like it's, it's a completely new way of looking at the world. So, um, pretty excited about that and they are too the projects that we're working on and and some you know thinking about holochain holoria and how that the whole systems flows mm -hmm. approach um, looks at this is is fantastic and i was just diving into some work on from kate Raworth at oxford who's written about this and donut economics and regenerative finance and how peer-to-peer -peer and, and these kind of value flows set the system up to win for the people and the planet and that's what's really cool about that this kind of approach it's just we're just trying to do something completely different that's, that's why it, it takes time and and hollow decks and some of these yeah. other initiatives that are warming up but yeah i guess from our, our road mapping perspective where we're sort of working to control our own destiny a, a little bit so we're at the moment so we're building we're positioning for these things as they emerge but we're we're sort of building the capability and features that we can build right now and that we know provide value to these real world projects. Mm. Um, uh, that's solving real problems for real projects that we can solve right now is kind of been our focal point of designing this roadmap. Um, um, and we'll continue on that trajectory, I guess. And so on that, on that note, um, it moves through to, to alpha um, in inverted commas. Uh, as we go through, we'll do a white paper update. Um, we're looking to get more grids into Iron World to yes. the map, ready to put that through. That's a, be a, that's a strong focus right now is to use it, work with our partners and get those grids in. Um, then, then to Iron Academy, which is, which mm. is really, really cool. Can you talk a bit about 
what what you what you see there, Sim? Yeah, I get like one of the things with the Iron World launch and release. Um, uh, we've got the form on the website where people can submit their community project or um, initiative and the goal of their initiative that they want to um, pursue. But I guess one of the Ion is um, an open community project. So we want to make it so um, anyone can develop and anyone can um, create these projects and deliver them themselves. So um, that's that's one of our goals with Ion Academy is to, to start producing some of these tools and education material just to help people build on the protocol, um, help them um, leverage the protocol and deliver it in their context. So, so that's a big one with Iron World that we'll be focusing on is, is sharing a little bit more um, uh, documentation and videos and uh, collateral around just showing people and also having um, uh, sort of peer coding sessions similar to like um, Hollow Chain in Action um, sort of concept as well. So. And we're already, um, we've already got the first person coming in to start this, right? Helping with mapping and getting things happening and, and sort of working through that to, to provide a template for how we work with the community. Yeah, we do. Yep. Yep. We've got Alex working on the um, 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 mapping some of the iron, some of the Myanmar grids. Mm. I think, I think it was 34 or 32 yeah. grids in that portfolio. So yeah. Um, we're starting to map those up and Alex is helping us with that. And um, um, Phil's spending a lot of time with Alex just to help him on that process. And we'll, we'll, um, that'll help us mature the process and then we can release some materials and get anyone in the community able to do that. That's right. But, but as you said, anyone can submit their proposal now they can For sure, go to yeah. the website we'll stick a we'll stick a link in the call uh here in the video so you can see where it is um so anyone around the world can put in their coordinates put in what they want to achieve put it in and we'll put it into the backlog of getting mapped so um please have a look click on the link and, and put in where you want to map it even if it's just your street that's still good enough yep. it doesn't have to be a huge grid it could be you and five friends it could be just your street that's awesome we will do it um brilliant well look uh that's kind of a great little update in 16 minutes so um yeah i think that's look we're, we're, thank you for everyone for bearing with us while we we get the roadmap ready and and um we we feel that this is this this thing is getting ahead of steam which is great but it takes time to get it done um sim you've probably got some wishes to send to people so what do you want to say for our final video before the end of the year uh just yeah big thanks to everyone for supporting us, I guess. And um, um, yeah, thanks to our community and everyone who's um, been in the discussion, especially on the um, the Discord and the Telegram groups. But um, yeah, really starting to see some in interesting conversations coming through in those groups and communities. And I think 23 is going to be a pretty big year, especially for energy. It's like headline news mm -hmm. even tail end of this year and i think next year it's just going to grow and grow and grow so um it's been a really tough year for crypto with um all the nonsense that's gone down but i think it it sort of um in some ways crystallizes the mission a little bit of what what um decentralization and distributed platforms are about um and projects are about so um, in some ways we can see that as an opportunity for, for a project like ION, which is actually trying to um, make a dent and make a positive impact in the world. So, so yeah, looking forward to 23 and thanks everyone. And I hope everyone, um, yeah, fared all right in, in this <laughs> hard year. Yeah. Um, it's been a, it's Certainly been a roller coaster of a year, hasn't it? So <laughs> it has. In in many respects, but it's like this whole like we've all got this feeling. We've had this feeling for many years now, and well, especially the last three or four, that this is coming since we started. This is that this is this this change in the way we have to do things is coming, and it's coming fast, uh, and it's getting faster and faster. And so I think there is a yeah, twenty three is going to be a big year for energy, but also just people demanding something different. 
Like it's, it, we've had the same thing for such a long time, especially in the way services are provided to us in energy and, and, and people taking it like solar exports being banned, right? Stopping people getting money for their solar. It just doesn't make any sense. And so this is what we're, we're hearing more and more sim, right? From different people coming to us saying, this doesn't make any sense anymore. And we're like, yeah, okay. We can. Yeah. It. So, um, yeah, we're excited. So thank you everyone. Um, thanks for, yeah. Echoing Sims points for supporting us and just being with us still in this, this journey. It takes time, but it's really it's great to have you here. So thank you. Um, we just want to wish everyone happy holidays and stay safe and enjoy some time off and hope to look forward to seeing you in 2023. Cool. Thanks everyone. See ya. See ya. Bye.